And, uh, and with me right now is Clint Burleson. He is the Clerk Craft Director for the American Postal Workers Union. Um, uh, APWU.org is the website. Clint, am I mispronouncing your last name? You got it right. Oh, Perfect. great. Yeah. Well, thank you. So uh, what does the Clerk Craft Director do? Those are, are words that I'm... Right. Well, so, with. you know, craft is... Uh, workers are often divided into crafts. They have as certain types of jobs they do. Ah. So we have three crafts. We have uh, the clerk craft, which is the largest craft of over 100,000 workers. They're the ones who work at the window. They work in the back, getting the mail delivered. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have the maintenance craft, We're doing maintenance type of work, custodial, uh, fixing the machines. And we have motor vehicle craft that does the driving between the post offices. And actually we have support services type of people who do IT type of work as well. Mm -hmm. So you have these different crafts, and um, so I'm the clerk craft director. Ah, so you have so, the, so you have a, a, a peer, a colleague in each one of these. Yes, roles, and we but you know we try to ignore that and just work together as one yeah. one union. Yeah, basically. that's that's great. Yeah. So tell me about the postal service and democracy. How do these things fit together? <clears throat> sure. Well, in the in the very beginning, the idea was you know when the when the people were starting the. Uh, the, the new country, they wanted, uh, the post office was a big part of it because they wanted people to be informed, right? So they made it so that it was cheap and affordable for people to communicate. This is fourth class mail, basically newspapers. Newspapers were the, were the big thing, free. right. Yeah. And so, I mean, they wanted an educated democracy. And, and you know, there, of course, not everybody could vote at the time, right? right. But, but Frederick Douglass, for example, Frederick Douglass, the escaped slave, uh, you know, he fought abolition, he, you know, he had a newspaper. Mm -hmm. And he was able to distribute and get their information out to people to, to uh, you know, influence a debate. Yeah. And so all these alternative types of things that where people were able to express themselves without necessarily commercial uh, money, right. just kind of like what you've done, right, on this yeah. show, right? Yeah. I mean, I'll, first, I wanted to thank you and Louise and Free Speech TV for providing this kind of alternative voice to the commercial media that's so much needed, right? Well, yeah, thank you, Clint. Um, yeah, postal service and democracy are intertwined. What, what about the influence of the larger mailers? Is so it's, it should be, right, in the beginning, that one, one, one rate for all people, all mm -hmm. over. So from, you know, from New York to California, the same price goes, right? right? And everybody pays the same. Well, the mailers, the large mailers started to say, well, you know, we're doing this large volume, so we should have to pay less. Right. So they've been arguing for less all along. So they're getting these large That's discounts. That's the third-class mail thing. Yeah, the second-class advertising right. mail. Second class. And even on, even on first-class, if mm -hmm. they have a large volume, they've been getting discounts. Right. So they're getting these large discounts, and they want more and more discounts. And what happens when they have these discounts is they've set up these private shops now, like Pitney Bowes owns them, um, other, other corporations like that. And they've come out of the blue. So you have these corporations pre-sorting the mail for these discounts. Right. And the owner is making millions and the workers are making like minimum wage. Mm. And so there's a transfer of work also from the post office where there's union jobs, right. paying decent wages. Um, the top of the guy, the top, you know, the postmaster general makes maybe $300,000 a year. So it's a very more equitable sure. uh, distribution of the income. And then you go to the private and the workers are paying minimum wage and the CEO is getting $8 million a year. Wow. So this discount thing, it's not only bad for workers, but it also makes it hard for a new, like, like a new magazine wanting to come in. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that volume, right, yeah. you have to pay, it's harder to get into the game. Yeah. So yeah, people I mean, like Time Warner is interested in keeping, you know, other people out, for example. Yeah, yeah I, uh, Louise and I saw that years ago. We, we, uh, we used to own an ad agency, and we also did seminars all around the country. We dropped about 2 million pieces of mail a month. And um, if it was pre-sorted, you got a different price. Right. And there were companies that would do the pre-sorting for you. In fact, some of the printers that we used would right. do the pre-sorting for us. But it wasn't, this was back in the 90s, the early 90s, it wasn't a giant industry at that time. It was just a, a service right. that was sometimes added on. So you're trying to say, basically, if sorting is being done or even pre-sorting is being done, we do it here at the post office? We should. And they're just giving too much of a discount now. So they're incentivizing. It's kind of like right. privatizing by incentivizing. Yeah. But giving these discounts, it's privatizing the post office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, that's a good one. The long lines at the post office. What, what, what are you what are Right, you okay. About that? So let's go back a little bit. And to, with the holiday season. Yeah, you mentioned the PAEA, Postal Accountability Enhancement Act, where mm -hmm. they, they applied the yeah. uh, prefunding mandate, right. Right? right? So they have to fund. So they made a manufactured crisis with the prefunding right. and with the price cap. So there's a price cap on postage. Uh, 
which is from who, who, who has that, right? What business right. has that? So there's a postage cap on an index that doesn't really apply to an organization like the Postal Service. So now they're, they're stuck. They don't have enough money, which they wanted, right. and so they're making cuts. And one way they want to make cuts is by uh, reducing the people going to the post office. Why? Because the, because the large mailers don't care about that. They don't go to the post office, right? Yeah. So they figure, let's have people like Staples do it. Let's have Office Depot you know, deal with the mail. We were fortunate. We have an organizer president. We stopped the Staples. We had a successful campaign to stop Staples from outsourcing our mail, basically. Wow. But th that's what they're continually trying to do. So they short staff the window, and they have a sign saying, you know, go over here for your postal needs and, or something like that, or right. go online, or use stamps.com, or, or whatever. Right. So they're, they're encouraging people to go away from the post office. And the and whole benefits of the large mailers are benefiting, because it kind of reduces their overall institutional costs. Yeah, remarkable. Clint Burleson, he is Burleson. He is the Clerk Craft Director here at the American Postal Workers Union, apwu.org. Clint, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you very much.